Hello and welcome back. This week's shower curtain pick was a movie that my sister and I used to watch all the time as kids and it still holds up today. This movie is 1987's The Gate and here it is on the curtain. Right there. The Gate. A gate to a demonic underworld is unwittingly opened when a tree is being felled in the backyard, leaving behind a large hole. Three kids being left home alone accidentally unleash the demon lord. Let's get into it. We open with a nightmare. Young Glenn, who is our star, is riding home to find that nobody is there. He is then drawn to his backyard tree house by the cries of a doll. The tree is struck by lightning and it falls, carrying Glenn with it. Glenn then wakes up to see that that very same tree was being chopped down in his backyard creating that large hole. Glenn finds a small geode in this hole and he shows it to his friend Terry. Terry, saying that these geodes can go for a lot of money, uh, convinces Glenn to continue to dig around in the hole where they actually find a much larger geode, while Glenn gets a sliver from the shovel causing him to bleed. We now meet Glenn's parents and his sister Al, who convinces them to not hire a babysitter, that she's almost 16 and she can handle the responsibility of being alone with her and her brother and even his friend Terry for the three days that they're going to be gone. The parents agree to leave them home alone with Al in charge and the dad tells Glenn to fill in that backyard hole after dinner, which Glenn does. That night before bed, Glenn asked his dad about a story that Terry told him about a man who, while building their house, this man died and the other workers buried him in the wall. So Glenn's father explains that no, this didn't in fact happen. And due to the fact that Terry's mother had died the year before, that will explain if Terry acts a little bit off for a while because pretty much his heart is broken. The parents leave for their three-day trip, and like any responsible teenager, Al throws a party. While the party rages on, Terry and Glenn are up in Glenn's room, and they break open that large geode. After they break open this geode, they notice that there's some kind of sketches that are left on an Etch-a-Sketch, etch and Glenn reads them aloud. Etch-a-Sketch. Sure. It's weird. Aka. Kuto. Glenn and Terry are then caught spying on the party goers and are invited to play a game. Light as a feather, stiff as a board. And Glenn finds out what it is to levitate. Dust drifting in front of the windows like dandelions in the green. Glenn starts to see some rather odd things in his room, while Terry, believing that his deceased mother has come back, runs to embrace her. We then see that instead of embracing his mother, it is in fact Glenn's now dead dog, Angus, who apparently passed away that night. The next day, we see Terry in his room. He is a metal enthusiast, and he's listening to an album entitled Sacrifix. So as he's listening to the lyrics of a certain song, he starts to see similarities between what's being said on the album and the events that have been taking place at Glenn's house ever since that hole opened in the backyard. What? 
watching mankind with a hatred that is as boundless as the stars, with plans for the destruction of man that are beyond imagining. So now Al, trying to figure out what to do with their dog Angus, is told by her friend Eric that he will take care of the dog. He takes him to the animal control center, but it's closed. He goes back to the house where he's going to let them know that he doesn't know what to do with this dog when suddenly he sees the hole in the backyard that Glenn had filled in the night before, but now it's open again. He takes the opportunity and he buries the dog in that hole. So now Terry comes to tell Glenn I got demons. He explains all about the band's sacrifice and that they were very much into demonology. This band wrote their own lyrics that they got from the Dark Book, which is like a Bible for demons. This Dark Book is found inside the album. It is explained that the band's sacrifice only made this one album and then they all died in a plane crash. The lyrics explain how you can summon the demons. When certain constellations are aligned, it will open the gate and the old gods or demons can come through. As it turns out, these constellations are aligned. So now Terry believes that they have accidentally performed the ritual that was explained in the lyrics. First, by reading the marks that were left behind on the Etch-a-Sketch. You know what it means? Gods of darkness, readers of chaos, come forth and take possession of this vile world. You also need blood to open the gate, which is what they got. When Glenn went to grab a shovel, he got a really bad splinter and that caused him to bleed. Also, in the dark book, there's a picture of the demon lord and over his head depicts a geode, just like the one that they found in the hole and broke open. There also needs to be a levitation performed, which is exactly what happened the night before at Al's party. And lastly, they would need a sacrifice. It can be either animal or human, which they figured was what happened to Angus. Now it's explained that since they didn't actually put Angus in the hole, that that's why the demons are only able to influence people in this world and not fully come through the hole and pretty much take over humanity. Terry then plays the album backward and it says how to close the gate. So he and Glenn go out to the hole, which is now covered with boards from the old tree house. And he says the words that he got from the album. After these words are said, the boys move those boards and see that the hole is filled in. Now, they think because of this that whatever they read had worked, not realizing that Eric had in fact buried Angus there and had filled it in. That's why it's filled in, not because of what they said. A little bit later on, Terry then reads that had the sacrifice been put inside the hole, once the demons come through that gate, they would need two human sacrifices to solidify hell on earth. The only thing that could close the gate after this occurred is an act of pure love and light. Al's friends, the Lee sisters, come over for a slumber party and with the shattering of a window, <laughs> Our heroes learn that the gate is in fact open. Glenn believes that his parents have come home early. He soon finds out these are not his parents. Mom! Dad! You've been For the first time, we see the little demon minions. Better come back. Shh. Shut up, you guys. Oh. What do you want? What is it? Come on. We now see the working man that was buried in their walls from Terry's story. He arrives, grabs Terry, and takes him with him. This is the first human sacrifice. The worker man in the wall comes again and this time takes Owl.
she is the second and last needed human sacrifice to open this gate. We now meet the Demon Lord as another portal opens in the living room. <laughs> Demon Lord lifts Glenn by the hand. When he releases and Glenn looks at his palm, he sees that there is now a human eyeball. Hell is now coming to Earth. Glenn starts yelling for the Demon Lord to come back, to take him instead. He then stabs the eye in his palm angering the demon lord who now does come back. Then, with an act of pure love and light, Glenn shoots the demon lord with a rocket. This act successfully closes the gate and we once again see Glenn reunited with Al, Terry, and their dog Angus. The only thing not repaired is the house. We now come to the cast and crew. First we have Steven Dorff who has actually made a pretty big name for himself in movies such as Leatherface, Jackals, Alone in the Dark, Blade, and so many other horror movies. Krista Denton is the young woman who played Al. She's been in movies such as The Secret of Lost Creek and The Bad Seed. Lewis Tripp played Terry. He's been in movies such as The Gate 2 and Sacrifice, which actually seems to be another gate movie where he reprises his role as Terry. Uh, this has not been confirmed. This movie has not been made yet, so fingers crossed. Tibber Tax is the director of this movie, and other movies he has directed are Spiders, Ice Spiders, Mega Snake, Mosquito, Killer Rats. I'm seeing a similarity between these movies. And once again, he did The Gate 2. Michael Mankin was the writer of this movie, and he also wrote The Gate 2. Now to my favorite part of these clips, the fun facts. So the little minions that you see running around, most of those were shot with men in rubber suits. And the way they shot it, it made it look like they were teeny tiny. The patch on the back of Terry's vest is by a band named Venom, and they sang the song The Seven Gates of Hell. The writer, Michael Nankin, apparently took some real-life experiences and put them into this movie. Uh, for example, he also had a best friend by the name of Terry. In the original script of this movie, the demons actually make it past Glenn's house into the town, and you see them pulling people out of their houses and killing them in the streets. So there you have it. The acting from our three main characters is rock solid. They all did such a fantastic job. And it's also a fun story. You know, it's original and told so well that it holds up even to today's standards. Even if the uh, special effects are a little bit lacking, you can still see what they're trying to do with it. And honestly, I feel in 1987, they did a really good job with these effects. So all of that being said, I am very obviously giving the gate five coffins. It is well worth your time to watch it. Thank you again, all who are watching these videos and we'll see you next time.